they're all yours guys have fun that's mine okay lovely all right thank you very much coco all right welcome back everybody it's really nice to have you here with us again uh if you recall last time we had started our uh, geometry course and we had started off talking about the proportionality intercept theorem. So what I wanted us to do today was to continue this conversation, but to talk about the converse of the proportionality intercept theorem and what that means. And then I want us to have a look at some exam type questions where we will be using possibly some of the geometry that we've learned all the way from grade eight, but maybe not so much, but certainly uh, putting into practice proportionality intercept theorem and its converse as well. So please unmute your mic, participate, ask questions, make suggestions, tell me what you think. Um, nobody's judging you. Um, this is a, a safe space where we've all just come together to, to learn and to work and to just try and do a little bit better. So um, even if we do get things wrong, I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Um, nobody's judging you. All right. So anyway, have fun. I hope that this is enjoyable. And of course, if there's anything that I do or say that uh, is not clear, please don't um, worry about stopping me and asking me to explain again. I've got no problem doing that at all. Okay. So our do now is something that we were looking at last week. So this is just going to get our, our brains working again. This goes back to what we were talking about with the proportionality intercept theorem. Okay. So we haven't, we're not speaking about the converse yet. The do now is specifically related to the proportionality intercept theorem that we discussed last time. So in other words, if there is a third side inside a triangle that's parallel, or if there is a side inside of a triangle that is parallel to the third side, it cuts the other two sides into the same proportion. Okay, so let's look at this information. They tell us that in triangle QRS, T and U are points on RS and W is a point on QS such that QT is parallel to WU, all right, so let's go and put that in because that information is not there. So QT, so that's this line over here, is parallel to WU, lovely, fine. And they've also told us, let's change our colors now, that uh, QR, so that's this line over here, let's give it two orange arrows, it is now going to be uh, parallel to WU like so. The other thing that they've given us matrix are some measurements. They have told us that QW, so that's this over here, is 12. They've told us that WS is 11. They've told us that TU, so that's this little bit over here, is 6. And what they want from us is RS, and they say correct to the nearest whole number. All right, so RS represents the length of the entire side over here of triangle QRS. This is RS over here. All right, so if we want RS, essentially which three bits make up RS? Um, and I'm gonna put that question out to, uh, Hamid. Which yes, three um... parts make up RS? Uh, the three parts that make up RS would be QR and QS and RS. Okay, so if we want, thank you very much, Hamid. If we want to answer the question about how long RS is, all right, RS is this line over here. All right, so essentially what they're saying to us is we need to work out the length of SU. We've already got the length of UT, and we also need the length of TR. And if we add all those three together, that'll give us the length of RS. All right, that's what they want from us. How many triangles are we able to work in here, Matrix? Are we working in just one triangle, or are we working in more than one triangle? More than one. More than one triangle. Okay, absolutely. So now let's identify the names of the triangles that we're allowed to work in. Okay, so Christian, this question is for you. Which triangles are we allowed to apply proportionality intercept theorem in? Which two triangles? Um, I'm not exactly sure, man. 
Okay, so this is always the, this is the difficult part. All right, so when we are working with proportionality intercept theorem metric, we need to identify the triangles that we are allowed to work in. Okay, there are two, right? What you are looking for, matrix, is you are looking for a triangle. Its orientation is unimportant. And what you need to have is another line inside that is parallel to the third side of the triangle. That's what you're looking for. All right, so Chad has made a suggestion. Let's have a look at what Chad says here in the chat box. He said we can work in triangle QTS. QTS, uh-huh, okay, so Chad, why don't we do that in purple? So he's right, look here, Matrix, here's the line at the bottom, up to S, and then from Q to S as well. Okay, highlighters are your best friend in geometry. All right, so highlight the triangles to make them pop out at you a little bit. Perfect, we can work in triangle QTS because WU, is parallel to QT, 100%. Okay, good going, Chad. All right, Chad also says QRS, and you're quite right about that as well, Chad. So that's the big triangle matrix, all right, the big triangle. So QRS is this triangle over here, and the reason that we can work in that is because we've got QR parallel to WT. Can everybody see that? So if you can give me a thumbs up or a smiley face. Does that make sense? We've identified the triangles that we can work in and why. Okay, thanks, Celine Dile. Got it, cool beans. Okay, so now, clearly they've given us two triangles to work in because we're going to need both of them in order to be able to answer the question. We need to work in which triangle to calculate the length of SU? Which triangle do we need to work in to calculate the length of SU? SU. T. In, say S again. Oh. Perfect. SQT. All right. Lovely. So you don't need to write this, but I'm doing it for you so that it's, it's specific. Okay. In triangle SQT, we can make a proportion. All right. We can make a statement. All right. Um, I don't know who was speaking to me right now. Do you want to make the proportion? I don't know who it was. S W. Okay, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so S W. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, S W. Over. over yes. Um, is equals to S U. Yes. Over U T. Beautiful. Okay, now I need to know who that lovely voice belongs to. Who's talking to me? Celine Dile. Celine Dile. Okay, Celine Dile, you smashed it. Okay, so now you've made the proportion. What else do you need to put in, Celine Dile? Um, um, That's it. The reason. Okay, so proportionality intercept theorem, and what mustn't we forget to do, Silindile? Uh, put the parallel lines. Put the parallel put lines, it. good. Yeah. You've got it, keep going, you're not wrong. Oh, <laughs> um, it's, it's W-U uh -huh. and, and Q-T. Perfect. No, no, W-T. No, 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 you're right. W, U, and Q, T, 100%. Okay, 100%. Okay, <clears throat> now we can substitute. So, yeah. matrix. We're now going to substitute from our diagram. Let's, let, let's use a different color. All right, so S, W is how long? What should I write in place of S, W? 11. 11. In the place of W, Q, what should I write? 12. Indeed, Christian. Well done, Silendile. In the place of SU, that's obviously what I'm trying to calculate, so I'm going to leave it as SU. And in the place of UT, what should I write? Six. 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 Indeed. Well done. 
Okay, thank you very much, Silindile. You've done really well. And thanks, Christian. Okay, Carabo says that SU is five comma five. What do the rest of you get? Do you agree with Carabo? Okay, so five Benedict five. says same. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Five comma five. Five comma five. So now, Carabo, you now you're saying sorry, no. So does that mean that you disagree with yourself? <clears throat> Okay, you're not you're not wrong, Caraba. Five comma five was correct. Okay, so that was perfect. Okay, excellent. We're almost there. Now that we know the length of SU, we know that it's five comma five. <laughs> it's okay, Caraba. No worries. Now we need to work out the length of what matrix? What do we need to work out the length of now? What are we looking at? Benedict, any idea? What do we need to finish our question? Indeed, Christian, indeed, Carabo. Yes, still indeed, we need the length of TR. Yes, perfect, Benedict, and everybody else. Lovely, okay, so now, which triangle? Um, to be honest with you, Chad, if you don't write the units, uh, you're not going to lose any marks. But yes, you're right. If they give you units, you should actually you should actually write what they are. So I should have said millimeters, um, but they, they won't penalize me for that. But since we want to do things the right way, let's do it the right way. That's no problem at all. Okay, so now I need someone to make me a proportion so that I can solve TR. Okay, Christian, you're saying triangle SQR and SWT. Okay, <clears throat> you can't work in SWT, Christian, why not? Why can't you work in SWT? You're right about SQR, but why are you wrong about SWT? Does anybody else know why Christian's wrong about SWT? There are no parallel lines, ma'am. Exactly a C pair, exactly. Okay, so Christian, when you want to work inside a triangle, there has to be a pair of, tri of, of parallel lines. Always look for that, okay? And then you will be able to, that is the, the critical thing here. And then you will be able to identify which triangles you work in. Okay, but yes, you were right about SQR. Okay, so a C pair, this one belongs to you. Please make me a proportion so that we can solve for TR. Okay, ma'am. In triangle SQR, um, W Q. W Q. Q. All right. Over S Q. Oh, oh, over S W, ma'am. Over S W. That's fine. Is equal to T R. Mm -hmm. Over S T. Lovely. No problem. Perfect. All right. Reason, Asipe? Prop theorem. Uh, WT is parallel to QR. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So remember, guys, if you use... Sorry? Can you also say um, SW over WQ is equal yes. to ST over TR? 100%. 100%. You can say that. That's no problem at all. There are so many different proportions that you can make, um, Hamid, in order to be able to, to solve it. I mean, you could even say TR uh, is to WQ is the same as ST is to SW. Um, but what I think is the easiest thing for you guys to do, and this is just my, my, my opinion, is put the... A side that you are looking for in the numerator of the first fraction. Um, and that way it just makes it so much easier to solve for it. You don't have to then go and multiply and divide or whatever the case is, but you don't necessarily need to do that. Okay, but when I'm teaching this at school, that's my suggestion. But yes, you can do that too. All right, so now substituting in is our next step. So WQ is 12, SW, we all agree, is 11. TR, we agree, is what we are looking for. And 
and what's the next part? ST, which we have agreed would be 11,5. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what is TR matrix? I get 12,54, but if you round up to two decimal places, 12,55. So lovely, thank you very much. So Ozio, thank you very much, Benedict as well. So that's 12,55, okay. But they did tell us to round off to the nearest whole number, didn't they? So that would be to 13, okay, indeed. And what is the very last thing that we need to do? We're going to? Add all three together. Okay. In fact, maybe what we should do, hang on a second, because we've got the 5 comma 5 there. So let's do this. Let's say 5 comma 5 plus 6 plus 12 comma 5 5. Remember, we're adding together S, U, U, T, and T, R. What do we get? 24.05. 24.05. So we'll say 24 millimeters. There we go, Chad. We put in our millimeters as well. Okay. Um, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Christian, you're asking which triangles did we work in? Not a problem. I'm happy to go through that again. Christian, in this question, there were two triangles that we worked in. The first triangle that we worked in was the purple one, triangle SQT. Let me just try and make the purple lines a little bit darker. There. Is that sort of popping out a bit more? And the reason we could work in that triangle, Christian, is because we have WU parallel to QT. So we can apply the proportionality intercept theorem to that triangle. Does that make sense? Then we could also work in triangle. Hang on one moment. Let's just get a different. I think I was using blue. <clears throat> then we could also work in triangle QS. Sorry, I'm just highlighting the sides here. QSR. Oh, I'm not doing a very good job. But anyway, I'm just trying to make it pop out a bit more. And there's the third side. Okay. And the reason that we could work in that triangle, Christian, is because we've got QR parallel to WT. Does that make sense to you now? Can you see it? Right, the purple triangle and the blue one. Okay. And I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to highlight the triangles for yourselves with a highlighter, okay, to help it pop out. All right, so Deneo says, where did we get the 11 comma 5? Okay, so Deneo, the 11 comma 5 uh, is, is, is what we subbed in for ST, okay? So when we were subbing in, when we were subbing in ST over here, we subbed ST in as 11.5. Right, so if you recall, I've kind of drawn over it now, but we know that UT, there we go, Hamid's got the right answer there, exactly. The six plus the 5.5. Can you see that, Janelle? Hamid's got it in the, in the chat as well. So it was these two added together. Does that make sense? Cool. Thanks, Hamid. Beautiful. All right, good. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling really good about this. How do you feel about proportionality intercept theorem? Do you feel good? So you can give me some emojis or unmute. Cool. Thank you, Saki. Thank you, Hamid. Thanks, Azai. Thanks, Selindile. Thanks, Rekumodetswe and Chad. Okay, good. All right. So again, if there's anything that you don't understand, please do stop and ask. All right, let's move on. So now we need to talk about the converse, all right? So the converse of the proportionality intercept theorem tells us that if a line divides two sides of the triangle into the same proportion, then that line is parallel to the third side. 
Okay, now the proof for this theorem is not required for examination purposes, so they'll never ask you to prove this, but you've got to be able to work with it, all right? So in other words, if we've now been given triangle ABC and they tell us that AX over XB is the same as AY over YC, we may then conclude that XY is parallel to BC and our reason would be converse prop int theorem. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Cool. All right. So now here's an example of exactly how we're going to pop that, put that into, into action. All right. So here we go. Consider triangle X, Y, Z. All right. We've got line P, Q. Oh, sorry, Hamid. No problem. I didn't mean to. If you want to just get that down quickly. Okay. So converse proportionality intercept theorem says that if a line divides two sides of a triangle in the same proportion, so the line in this case is, is, is XY, all right? The line XY divides AB and AC into the same proportions because AX over XB equals AY over YC. Thus, XY must be parallel to BC. Okay, that, that's converse proportionality intercept theorem. Is that cool? Yes, ma'am. All right, like it. Let's move on. <clears throat> okay. So this is how it works. They tell us that PQ lies on sides XY and XZ respectively. They give us that XP is 18 centimeters. They give us that PY is 10 centimeters. They tell us XQ, let's write in a different color since it's a different side, is 22 and a half. And they tell us that QZ is equal to 12,5. They want us to prove that PQ is parallel to YZ. Part of this matrix is recognizing that they want you to use the converse of the proportionality intercept theorem. I mean, they're dropping major hints here that it's converse proportionality in intercept theorem. What are the major hints that they are dropping? They are telling us the lengths of the sides. So in other words, they are giving us the information we need to work out what XP over PY is. They are giving us the information to work out what XQ over QZ is. So if we can work out what those two uh, uh, ratios are, if they are equal to one another, we are allowed to conclude that line PQ has cut sides x, y, and x, z into the same proportions, and hence p, q is parallel to y, z. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but we're not allowed to assume it. We can't assume what we're trying to prove, all right? So we have to set it out like this. We're going to set it out as x, p over p, y, and then we're going to work out what that is. So XP over PY, what should I write next? Is what over what? XQ over QZ. No, I can't write that, Hammond. I'm not allowed to write that. I've got to work because then I'm making an assumption. Then I'm assuming, if I write that, then I'm assuming that this is true. I'm trying to prove that it's true using the information that's given to me. So what I need to write, Hamad, is that XP over PY is 18 over 10. Okay. And I'm going to simplify that. And 18 over 10 is going to leave me with... Um, what's 18 over 10 simplified? 9 over 2, isn't it? Over five. Nine over five. Now, hang on. Divided them both. Oh, of course. Sorry, nine over five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quite right. Nine over five. Excellent. Thank you. Now, separately, I'm going to say XQ over QZ 
is equal to 22,5 over 12,5. And yeah, what's it equal to? Put in the value, says Chad. There we go, 9 yeah, over 5. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So in other words, what we have done is this. We have worked out that A has, I'm just using A as an a, any letter. We have worked out that A has a value of 9 over 5. We have worked out that B has a value of 9 over 5. So now we can conclude that A and B must be equal to one another. No, Benedict, you can't. You can't say that as your starting statement. I'll explain why now again, but no, you cannot. If you do that, they will not even mark what you've written, okay, because you've made, you are assuming um, what you're trying to prove to be true is true. Um, I'm just going to think of a better way that I can say that to you. So XP over PY. So here is our deduction. Based on this, XP over PY is equal to XQ over QZ. Okay, because they're both equal, 9 over 5. So, therefore, PQ is parallel to YZ converse proportionality intercept theorem. Okay, that's how it would work. Right. Benedict? What you are asking is a very, very common question. And in so many places in Euclidean geometry, uh, students make the mistake um, of using what they think is true to prove that something is true, okay? Remember, we do not know that PQ is parallel to YZ, do we? We don't know that. So we can't say XP over PY equals XQ over QZ because we do not know that PQ is parallel to YZ. That would only be true if PQ was parallel to YZ. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what proportionality intercept theorem tells us. It tells us because the one side is parallel to the third side of the triangle, the sides are cut into proportion. So now, if we don't know that that line is parallel, we cannot make that proportion statement. Okay, it's what we are trying to prove. So this is how we do it. We do it as two separate sums. We work out the ratio of XP over PY. We work out the ratio of XQ over QZ. Bob's your uncle. They're both equal to the same thing. Everybody's happy. Uh, we write our proportion. You must um, make this conclusion. So in other words, you've done um, the calculation, you've done the second calculation, you must draw this conclusion over here. This is very important. So I'm talking about this one here, because this is what proves it. Okay, and then you can deduce that the lines are parallel and reason. These two here, that statement and this statement go together. That's where you get the marks. You don't get the mark for writing PQ parallel to YZ. Okay, so you'll, you'll get a mark for, uh, let's just choose a different color. You'd get a mark for that, you'd get a mark for that, and then it's these two together, statement, reason, where the mark would be allocated. Okay, how does everybody feel? Thumbs up, thumbs down, making sense? Any questions? Lovely, guys. Thank you. Thanks for all the thumbs up. You sure? Okay. And can I all ask right. again, how will we know if it's the converse theorem? Okay. How will you know the difference? Yes. Cool. All right. So I'm going to write that down for you over here. All right. You will use proportionality intercept theorem when you have been given parallel lines. So when the diagram comes with the parallel lines, then you can use proportionality intercept theorem. You will use converse 
proportionality intercept theorem. If you have not been given parallel lines. So in other words, i.e., you are proving the lines are parallel. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so proportionality intercept theorem gets used when they give us the parallel lines. When they give us the parallel lines, then we can say this over this is that over that, all right? But if we do not know that the lines are parallel, we cannot make that proportion statement. It's only true because the lines are parallel. So if the lines are not parallel and it's what we need to prove, then it's converse proportionality intercept theorem. And then you would do it the way that we've just done this question over here. Okay. All right. So now let's have a look at the same thing, but just a little bit more difficult. Okay. So <clears throat> here in the figure, They've told us that EF is parallel to BC. They've told us that FG is parallel to CD. And now what they want us to do is prove that EG is parallel to BD. A little bit more difficult question. Okay, now this is actually a good talking point. All right. Have we been given parallel lines, Matrix? Yes, yes. we have. We yes, have. We have. Okay. So, in which two triangles have we been given parallel lines? A, B, C, and A, C. Yes, indeed. All right. So, that means that in triangle A, B, C, and in triangle A, C, D, we can do proportionality intercept theorem, can't we? Yes. Okay, because we've been given the parallel lines. All right, so this is what we would write. We would write that AE over EB is going to be equal to, I'm working in, sorry, I should have put that down, in triangle ABC. All right, so I'm going to let somebody else finish that off. AB over EB is equal to? A AF over FC. Beautiful. AF over FC. Reason matrix. What do you reckon, Prop Exactly. Int prop end theorem or prop theorem, prop end theorem. And then we've got a name there. Parallel Parallels. lines. Exactly. Luyanda, what are the parallel lines? AE, uh, EF, sorry, and BC. Beautiful. Now, matrix, we're going to go and work in the other triangle. All right, so now we're working in triangle A, C, D. Okay, so now I'm going to ask, who have I not spoken to? Sebash, you're new with us today. Do you feel confident to give this a go, Sebash? Would you be prepared to make a proportion statement about triangle ACD? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go for it. Um, in triangle ACD, AF over FC is equal to AG over GD. Okay, lovely, well done. All right, so now, reason? Uh, prop in, into theorem. Good, and, keep going. Uh, FG is parallel to CD. Okay, excellent. Now, what do you notice, Matrix? What is the same in both of these statements that you've made? Exactly. Uh, uh, if I would FC um, is mm, exactly. Uh, 
Uh, absolutely, Christian. Both AE over EB. Exactly, Carabo, you've said it perfectly. And AG over GD are equal to the same thing. So this is like our bridge. This is what connects these two things together. So if these two are equal to one another, then the assumption is that AE over EB must be equal to AG over GD. So in other words, AE over EB is equal to AG over GD. That means, let me just move my board down a little bit. That means that E G has to be parallel to B D. Exactly. What's my reason? Kind of. I'm That's it. Okay. I am proving that the lines are parallel. Okay, so I have I have proved that this proportionality um, relationship exists. So therefore, I have proved that these lines are parallel. Okay, so EG parallel to BD, and then I'm going to write converse proportionality intercept theorem. Okay, matrix, does that make sense to everybody? Are there any questions? Cool, Saki. So you, can you see how the two are working together? You can see how the two both are coming into play in, in um, this particular question. All right. Remember, when you say prop in theorem matrix, do not forget to name the parallel lines. Okay. Otherwise, they will not give you those marks and finals. Okay. And we don't want you using any marks at all, especially not for things that we understand. All right. Thank you for all those thumbs ups from everybody. I know that if you have any questions, you will stop me if you need to. All right. So let's carry on going. All right. Let's have a look at these questions. So here is um, something that is sort of more or less the same, but then there's also something that's a little bit different. All right, so situation number one, we have looked at together, right? And um, if you understood what we've done so far, then doing number one should be easy. But what I'm gonna do is, um, whoopsie daisy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call on someone. Um, let's see who we haven't spoken to yet. Neo. Neo, can I call on you? Cool, Neo, thank you very much. Okay, so now if you're happy to type, that's fine. It's not a problem, all right? So now everybody can see the chats, cool. Okay, so now in question number one, Neo, it says using the information given on the diagram, prove AB parallel to EF, okay? What? Uh, theorem are they uh, are they um, implying you should use here Neo? You can pop it in the chat. What do they what do you think they want you to use? Neo, have you been given the parallel lines? There we go. Okay, look at what Hamed said. Okay, Neo, you have not been given the parallel lines. Okay, so this is what, it's fine, it's cool, it's no problem, that's why we're all here. So this is what we were talking about when we were up here, okay, this bit here, we will use proportionality intercept theorem when we've been given, <laughs> it's fine, my girl, you don't have to apologize. When we've been given proportionality intercept theorem, that's when we're going to, uh, when we've been given the parallel lines, that's when we're going to use proportionality intercept theorem. When we have not been given the parallel lines, that's when we're going to use converse proportionality intercept theorem. Okay, so Neo, I would like you to um, 
tell me what you think I should write next based on the information that's been given here. Make a suggestion on what I should, on what I should write. Okay, so Hamid has said DA over AE is equal to 14 over 6. So now, Hamid, you've demonstrated to me that you understand exactly what we're doing here. Okay, you, you know what's going on. All right, that's really, really good. Obviously, we could simplify that. Um, whether we do or not, I suppose, doesn't really make any difference. If we divide that by two, we get seven. And if we divide that by two, we'd get three. Yes, Azayo, it would give us seven over three. Okay, so Azayo, I'm going to call on you next. Make me another statement with regards to this diagram. Hamid's done the one thing. I want you to do the other one. What do you think it is that I would like you to write? Ah, DB over BF, DB over BF. Beautiful, Isaiah, keep going. 21 over 9, that's it, which is equal to, dun, 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 yes, yeah, 7 over 3. Beautiful. Okay, nice, good job. Okay, Neo, can you see how we've managed to prove that DA is to AE is the same as db is to bf. That's what we've been able to show, all right? So now what should I write, Neo? What am I gonna write next? What's my conclusion? <laughs> yes, Carabo. Okay, so, but first Carabo, first I must write therefore da, over AE is equal to DB over BF. I must write what oh, proves it. Exactly, okay? And now we can do exactly what you said, Neo, and exactly what Carabo said. Now we can conclude. We are going to conclude that the lines are parallel, a, B parallel to E, F, you said, and quite right, yes, converse, proportionality, intercept, theorem. Good job. Okay, very nice. Well done. Okay, so hopefully now it's, it's a little bit more clear as to uh, when we would use proportionality intercept theorem as to when we would use the converse. So we're using the converse to prove that lines are parallel. So hint, 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 okay? If you're working in triangles and they've given you the lengths of sides, <laughs> cool as I am, I'm so glad. They want you to use converse proportionality intercept theorem. Okay, all right, let's have a look at uh, number two and see what it wants us to do. I'm so glad this is feeling better, Isaiah, that's great. Uh, Ma'am, don't you include that they're both equal to, you can, you can, you can. yeah, that, that's fine. I don't, think, I don't think we would be penalized for not, but yeah, both equal seven over three. Then we really are being, um, Dotting our I's and crossing our T's. No, dotting our I's and crossing our T's as we say in English. Yes, that's it. Okay, all right. Let's have a look at the next one. So now we see a circle. Okay, so in the diagram below, KM is the diameter, all right? Uh, and they've told us that the circle center is O. Okay. Uh, they've told us that OK is R. So let's put that in. Mm. 
OK is R. They've told us that OC is 4R. So I'm going to do that now, 4R. And they've also told us that angle H, let's just call it a little X, is equal to angle C. OK, so before I go on any further, all right, um, based on the information that's been given to us, we need to make some deductions. So if OK is R and if OC is 4R, then what? What are you what are you deducing or concluding? What are they what are they saying but not saying? CK is for R minus R, which is 3R. Exactly. Okay, so they are telling us, without telling us, that CR has to be, sorry, CK, I beg your pardon, has to be 3R. Okay, good. They've also told us that angle H and angle C are equal to one another. Well, what implications does that have for the diagram? What does that mean? An isosceles triangle. Mm -hmm. Keep going. I'm liking what you're saying. If it's an isosceles triangle, then which two sides are equal? O, H, and O, C. So in other words, if, if uh, angle C is equal to angle H, it means that OC equals OH. Yes, well done. Okay, quite right. So if OC equals OH, can we now go back and prove that these lines are parallel to one another. Can we prove that EK is parallel to CH? What would we need to show? Yes, we can do that. What would we need to show though, to make sure that it's, to make, well, actually to prove that it's true. We would need to show that. Two sides are in proportion. The two sides are in proportion. So in other words, OK is to KC is the same as OE is to EH. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay, so where do you think we should start? What would be the first thing you think we should write down, Matrix? Where would you start? I think we'll start with the equal sides, ma'am. I, I agree with you. I think what I would probably do here is I would start with uh, OH equals 4R. Okay. What's my reason for saying that? Yes, Leander. But hang on a second. We, we're gonna, I'm going to show you now where it comes from. Okay. What is the reason... So just hang on, we're going to build it up. What is the reason that OH is equal to is equal to 4R, Luyanda? Ma'am, is it going to be sides of an isosceles triangle? Yes, but no. <laughs> so you are not allowed to say sides of an isosceles triangle. It's true, but the reason, the reason that, that what we call this is angles opposite equal. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Sides opposite equal, equal angles. Sorry, I'm I'm now I'm saying the wrong thing. Okay, it is sides opposite equal angles. Okay, so sides opposite equal angles all right now remember we do not know that the lines are parallel so what we need to do is we need to show in two separate calculations that OK over KC is the same as OE over EH in order to prove that KE is parallel to CH 
So now I'm going to do the first one. All right. And if we do this a little bit differently, it really doesn't matter. But let's let's try this like this. OK, I'm going to say that OC over OK. OC over OK is 4R over R. So OK over, sorry, OC over OK is equal to what? Nala, oh. ma'am, please explain OH again. OK, I will. Sorry, guys, just give me one second. All right. So Nala, when we are working in an isosceles triangle, one of two things can happen. If they tell us that AB, so this is what's been given. So if they give us AB equals AC, we deduce that angle B equals angle C because they are angles opposite equal sides. That's not what happened here. What happened here is the, the converse of this, even though we don't use the word converse. What they've done is this. They've said to us, angle B equals angle C. So that's what's been given. Sorry, that's supposed to be an A. We have been given that angle B equals angle C. So now we are deducing AB equals AC because they are sides opposite equal angles. Okay, Nala, this is what we have done. Does that make sense? Okay. Remember, we are trying to prove lines are parallel, all right? So we are using converse proportionality intercept theorem, all right? We need to show that OE or uh, in this case, OH over OE is going to be the same as uh, OC over OK. All right, so now I'm going to make another statement, All right? My second statement, I'm going to say that OH over OE is also equal to Four R over R. Next conclusion. What would we conclude now, Matrix? Are you guys understanding? Am I, have I lost anybody? OC over OK is equal to OH over OE. That's it. Good. Well done. Yes, Neo, that's exactly right. Yes, good. OK, so I haven't lost you. All right, lovely. Therefore, KE parallel to CH converse proportionality. Just okay, now <clears throat> what I haven't, ooh, why is it doing that? I don't know why sometimes my thing goes a little bit crazy here, but I want to ask, stop now. Sorry, I don't know what I pressed, but my pen just sometimes does this weird thing where it just goes a bit bananas. I want to know from you guys, why is OE equal to R? Radius. Because they are both radii, radii. exactly, exactly. All right, so OK and OE are radii. Okay, that's why I'm allowed to do what I've done. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to everybody. How are you feeling? Cool.
Cool. Thanks, Ayumide. Thanks, Sake. 100% says Hamad. Lovely. Thanks, Chad. Two thumbs up from Silendile. Leander says thumbs up and some stars. Very nice. Thank you, Jaden. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's great. Okay. All right. So we're halfway through. Now, cool, Azayo. Now for the interesting bit. <laughs> Neo says pizza. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Right, <clears throat> let's have a look at um, how we're going to put some of this into practice with exam type questions, okay? So um, this I, well, didn't steal because it's um, public information, uh, from a 20 November, 2014 paper, November. Uh, this was question 9.2. Um, the students were told in the diagram, ABCD is a parallelogram. The diagonals of ABCD intersect at M. F is a point on AD such that AF to FD is four is to three. Let's go ahead and go and put that in. Um, <clears throat> AF, so that's this bit over here, isn't it? is four is to FD, is that bit over there, is four is to three. Uh, e is a point on E, E is a point on AM, okay, fine, on AM, such that EF is parallel to BD, okay, fine, and MD intersect in G. Okay, so in other words, there's that point of intersection over there. Now, this is a little bit more of a complex diagram, isn't it? I mean, it's not just two triangles next to one another. There's a parallelogram. There's potentially more than two triangles. So now we've kind of got to sift through a little bit more information in order to be able to answer the questions, right? So these are the questions. Sorry, I stuck them on the side, but um, it doesn't really matter where they are. Let me just move. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chat over there. All right. So let's just have a look at what they're asking us to do. Okay. They're asking us to work, to work out the ratio of... EM over AM, okay? So what I want you to do is go and identify where EM and AM are, right? So matrix, can we see? A, EM is this bit. Sorry, it's not a very dark color. And AM is this entire side. The whole thing. Right. Again, this question is suggesting, it's telling you which triangle to work in. Which triangle are you working in? Does anybody know? Can you tell me? Which triangle are you working in? ECF. Triangle AMP. That's it. Rechumaditswe or whoever said that. A, M, D, quite right. Okay, can you see matrix? You've got, let's just get rid of um, that. Okay, we'll talk about that again now. Okay, but correct. This triangle over here, okay, that's because we know something about AF and FD, and we've got this line, EF, parallel to the third side. So quite right. They want us to work in triangle AMD. So what would we write? What do you think the answer is? Oh, incidentally, sorry, I should move. Uh, this is out of three marks. Okay, so where do you think... What do you think we need to do next? Anybody want to tell me what they think I should write? Um, I think you should uh, write uh, FD over uh, FA. Just say that again, I didn't hear you. If 
E over S A. E M over over A M is equal to S C over S A. Okay, hang on one second. You are saying that, let me just scratch that out. You are saying, let me just get this. Uh, A, did you say A E? Um, e, e D over A, A D, I think. Okay. They want E M, so they want the whole side over the little bit. Okay, so that's equal to the whole side over the little bit. So I think you are on the right track there. Okay, so EM over AM. So EM is this little bit on this side. That's the same as FD on that side. So it's equal to FD over AM is the whole side. So here we want the whole side AD. I think that's what you said. I'm not sure I didn't hear properly. Is that correct? Okay, so EM over AM equals FD over AD. Quite right, Chad, that's exactly correct. Reason, have we been given the parallel lines? Yes, so our yes. reason is? Proportionality, intercept theorem. Good. What mustn't we forget to do? Name the parallel lines. Okay, so EF parallel to MD. All right, and now we can write what EM over AM is equal to. So <clears throat> FD is the side over here. That's three. So let's substitute that in. And AD, the whole side over there, that's going to be equal to what matrix? Seven. Indeed. Good. Well done. Nice. Okay. You've done that perfectly. I'm really pleased. Well done. So that's the first bit. Okay. So your three marks would be for statement, reason, and answer. Let's have a look at the second question. Now they want us to write down CM over ME. So again, get your highlighter and go and highlight side CM. Let's do it in this bright blue over here. Okay, so their matrix is CM. CM over ME. All right. Which triangle do you think they want you to work in? Triangle ABC. Triangle no. Right. Triangle ABC. No, they don't want you to work in triangle ABC. Somebody said something else. ABC. AEC. AEC. No. Somebody else? Yeah. How much? Yeah, triangle ABC. Yes. Not ABC. Uh, EFC. Someone, someone said it. Someone said EFC. CF, yes. Yes. Okay, so EFC. That's the triangle that they want you to work in. Do you know why? Because these two sides, MC or CM over ME form the two sides of this triangle, okay? And here is your parallel line, your line parallel to your third side, okay? So they are indicating to you that CME is one side of the triangle. CM over ME, and what you would then do is close off your triangle like this, like we've done in blue, and we can see that GD and EF are parallel to one another. All right, so that's why they are directing you to that triangle. They're trying to get you to use proportionality intercept theorem. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've got to identify which triangle we are working in. 
All right. So they are giving you the two bits of the side that are in proportion to one another. So if CM over ME, what would that be equal to? CM over ME is equal to, sorry, I've drawn so much over this, it's hard to see what's, what's there. CD over I think you were saying the right thing, Celine Dileshen. You, you broke off a little bit there, but CM over ME is going to be equal to CG, I think you said, over? Over FG. Over GF. Okay, so CM over ME is CG over GF. Very good. Reason? Sorry, my pen's done this funny thing again. Hang on. Now, what I press when it does that. Okay. So I have to provide a reason, Matrix. Prop in theorem, quite right, Chad. Prop in theorem. And then I've got to remember to EF parallel to MG. Good. Excellent. Okay, so now what's the next step in the problem? We've got CM over. Ma'am? Yes, ME. Sorry, ma'am. Yes. Okay, so we are allowed, like, let's say they gave us the parallel lines, like, they, they said that EF is parallel to BD, right? So when we, I don't know the word to use, but when we are, like, using those smaller triangles, like the one that we just used, which is mm -hmm. FEC, we are not given that EF is parallel to GM. It was, like, that long line. But since, like, it's the same line, we, we can say that GM. Correct. Oh, okay. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. So in other words, sure. yeah. So in other words, BMGD is a straight line. Okay. So yeah, we, we're allowed to say MG parallel to EF. And in fact, I think even if we said probably uh, BD parallel to, to, to EF, I'm sure that they would still, they would still give that to us. Okay. So okay, then, then, then. Okay, perfect. All right, so now there's a little bit of information missing here. Um, first of all, we know from the previous question, right, we know what EM is, right? We know that EM was equal to three, don't we? Okay, EM was equal to three from the previous question. But we don't know what um, uh, MC is equal to or what GC is equal to. So that little bit of information is missing, right? How are we going to work out the length of CM? So Chad says rules of a parallelogram. You're quite right. Which rules of a parallelogram? AM equals MC. It does. How long is AM? AM is seven. Okay, so MC will also be equal to seven. All right. So actually the best way for us to start this um, probably wouldn't have been with this, but it doesn't matter. We can always leave a space and we can come back. All right. So you can't remember the reason though. All right. So what we would do is we would say that CM is equal to seven. And our reason is this, Chad, diagonals of a palm. So the abbreviation for parallelogram of a palm are equal. Okay, so CM over ME equals CG over GF. So CM 
over ME equals, I'm just writing this again, CG over GF. <laughs> no problem. Rationality, intercept theorem, EF parallel to MG. Sorry, I'm just going to get rid of that so that it's not in our way. We know this. Sorry, I really am writing all over the place here. Okay, and that's it. We've got our answer. Let's just move the board up. Okay, so that would be equal to, in this case, 7 over 3. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, I'll move it down again. All right, so CM is equal to AE because they are the diagonals of a parallelogram. They're equal to one another. So if AM is 7, so is MC. And we already know that EM is 3 from the previous question. Again, this was out of three marks, I think. Let's just have a look over to the left-hand side and just check. Oh, yes, it was out of three as well. All right. So I believe in this situation here, what they would have done is they would have given you a statement reason mark for that, okay? Because this, this essentially is not matric work, right? Um, well, mind you, they probably would have given you a statement reason mark for this as well, because there would have had to have been a mark for the answer. Okay, so I, I believe that that's how they would have done it. Okay, all right, we're nearly there. So now the last question, area of triangle FDC over area of triangle BDC. So let's talk about that. Um, it's this something that you have seen in class. Have your teachers discussed uh, in Euclidean geometry and proportionality intercept theorem, have they spoken about area of a triangle over area of another triangle? Is this something you've... You've seen. Yes, they have. Okay, Hamid, that's good. What about the rest of you? Hamid says yes. How about the rest of you? Your teachers mentioned this. Is this something that you are familiar with? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, good, Asipe. Okay. Karen says no. Benedict says yes. Selendile says yes. Okay. So I think it's important that we do this question because this Spatley says, nope, okay, fine, not a problem. Spatley, we're going to go through it right now. Right. Yes, but you don't remember it. Fine, Rekomoditsui, not a problem at all. All right, so Rekomoditsui, I'm going to ask you, if you want to calculate the area of a triangle, how do you do that? What? There are two ways. Which two ways do you know? How do we calculate the area? Yes. I only know how space times height. <laughs> you are quite right. Okay, so area of a triangle is half base times height. But if they wanted you to recommend it, where they could also get you to work out the area of a triangle by using the area rule. Okay, we're not going to use the area rule in this particular case, but they can also get you to use the area rule. Anybody remember what the area rule is? Half A, B times sine of C. Yeah, that's it. So half A, B, sine C. Okay, so when you see a question like this matrix, it's either half base times height over half base times height, or it's it's the, the area rule. Okay, so just be just be aware of that. What I'm going to do is uh, just sort of get rid of some of all of this. Um, I'm just going to put in the vital information. We know that that's equal to seven. We know that that was equal to seven as well. We know that EM was equal to three. So I think a sensible way of starting this question is to go and highlight the triangles that we are talking about. Okay. So in this particular case, we are talking about triangle FDC. So if DC is this triangle over here. Sorry, guys, I haven't really drawn that very well, have I? FDC. All right. And 
And let's do the other triangle in a different color just to make it pop out. Let's try yellow, BDC. is this triangle over here. Now, I want to stress something to you, okay? This line here, line BC, is parallel to this line here, line AD, okay? Because ABCD is a parallelogram. So in other words, triangles DBC, and FDC lie between the same parallel lines. What does that mean? If I tell you that there are two triangles lying between parallel lines, what does that actually mean for us? Exactly, Iomide. They have the same perpendicular height. Do you want me to write that down, Matrix? Okay, so if triangles lie between parallel lines, they have, whoopsie, they have the same perpendicular height. Now, that goes back to what Rechel Medizio was saying at the beginning. She said, well, I, only rule I know is half base times height. Okay. So, Rechel Medizio, you're onto something here because they have the same perpendicular height. All right. So, now we want to do half base times height over half base times height. Yes? All right. So... If we are looking at triangle FDC and we want to write area of triangle FDC, it will be half. What would be the base? Which side would be the base? The perpendicular height is between these two lines. Okay, so there's the perpendicular height. So which line is the base in triangle FDC? FD, good Carabo. And we said that they have the same perpendicular height, right? So let's just call that H. So half base times height. Yeah? Let's do the same with triangle BDC. Okay? So also, area of a triangle is half. What do you reckon the base of triangle BCD is? Can pop it into the chat? Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's BC. Times height. Excellent, well done. Okay, so BC is the base where this line H is the perpendicular height. Okay, where FD is the base, this red line over here is also the perpendicular height. All right, so that's important to be able to see that in triangles. Is that clear for everybody? You can just pop a yes or a no into the chat because that's critical to being able to answer this question. Okay, cool, Hamad. All right, okay, lovely. Cool, guys. And now what happens in maths when we divide something by itself? We get... One, all right, so yeah, perfect, Chad. So half divided by half is one. H divided by H is one. So we've now got, therefore, we've got FD over BC is our answer. What did the question say? Did they actually want us to calculate the ratio? Oh, yes, they did. 
All right, so now, do we know what FD is? Yes, well, we know that FD is three. They told us that in the beginning. So we can now go and substitute. And do we know what BC is? Yes, indeed, BC is seven. What, why is BC seven? Because the, it's a palm, exactly. All right, so the opposite sides of a palm are equal. All right, so let's just dot the I's and cross the T's. I'm going to add that in. Uh, BC equals seven. Uh, opposite sides of palm are equal. Okay, I hope everybody can see my scribble. Okay, so there we go. We've done our first 10 marks of an exam question. How's everybody feeling? You can pop something much better. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Okay. Lovely, Matrix. Thank you. Cool. Karen, I'm so pleased to see two thumbs up. Good, Spatly. Nice. Thank you, everybody. All right. So thanks, Benedict. Thanks for the, the feedback. All right. So now are you ready to try something even a little bit more difficult? All right. So we've got 10 marks. Let's see if we can get another 13. All right, and if we can get <clears throat> 13 marks, that's um, at least half of the metric work um, that's done. All right, and you can see here now they're going to start bringing a little bit of the, the grade 11 work into this. Okay, so let's get this question done. All right, first of all, they say to us in the diagram below, EO bisects side AC of triangle ACE, EDO produced to be such that BO is equal to OD, and they've told us that, uh, AD and CD are produced to meet EC and EG at G and F respectively, so that's a little bit further up. And that's the only information that they've really, that they've really given us, right? What does EO by set side AC mean? EO, so let's just find line EO. Line EO is this line over here. And they've told us that EO by set side AC are, so what they're really telling us matrix is that CO equals OA, isn't it? That's what they're really telling us. Also, they're telling us that BO equals OD. So if BO equals OD and CO equals OA, then what? What does it tell us? Aha. Uh -huh. Why, Chad? Perfect. But why? Okay. It's actually, we've, it's actually so easy. It's something that we've even already sp spoken about. Exactly. All right. So diagonals of a palm are equal. Perfect. Okay. So over here, our first thing, because diagonals of a palm... Oh, no. Why is my pen doing that? Diagonals of a palm are equal. Let me just try and write a little bit neater. Okay, excellent. So we've done 2.1. Now, 2.2. Write down, with reasons, two ratios, both equal to ED, so let's go and highlight ED for ourselves. ED is this line over here. Let's just make it a little bit darker. ED over DB. Okay. 
So again, the age old question, in which triangles are we working? All right, if they want us to write ratios, which triangles are they expecting us to work in? Any suggestions, Matrix? Which two triangles do you think they want us to work in? So, ABE. ABE. Yes, I quite agree with you. I quite agree with you. ABE. All right. So that's this triangle over here. And which other triangle? Triangle BCE. EBA. E, E, V, A, right, and E, B, C. Okay, so we're working in E, B, A, and E, B, C. First of all, before we carry on, all right, in question 2.1, they told us that ABCD was a parallelogram, right? So that means that this side over here is parallel to that side over there. And it also means that this line over here is parallel to this line over here. So ED over DB. ED over db. Mm, hang on a second. I think, let's just get rid of all of this. Because okay, this is super important, all right? Got to work out which triangles we're working in. So if that side and that side are parallel, and this side here and this side here are parallel. And they've given us ED Where's the other side? ED. Remember, we're looking for a triangle. Did they tell us? That, that line was parallel over here. BO equals OD. Okay, yes, because it's this line, yeah, that line and that line that are parallel to one. Sorry, I just had to go, just look at that carefully before we carry on. Exactly right. Okay, so can everybody see that? Sorry, I just wanted to identify it for myself before I carried on. You were quite right. It is EBA and EBC. Here, we've got this line parallel to that one. All right, and then hopefully in the other triangle, you can see this as well. I'm just going to highlight that. In red for us, we have got um, the side here parallel to that one over there. Okay, can you see that matrix? Okay, so that's how we know which triangles we are working in. All right, is everybody happy with that? So now our ratios, let's go ahead and go and write them down. Okay, so let's just get a little space here. 2.2 ED over DB. Okay, so if we are working in triangle A, B, E, what should ED over DB be equal to? It should be equal to? 
A F over F E. Okay, so just just be careful. We've started with with E D. Oh, okay. oh yes, ma'am. So it's going to be E F. Yes, over, over F E. F A. That's it. Okay, E F over F A. Very F -A. nice. Well done. Yes, good. Well done, Spath. They're quite right. Reason. Proportionality, yeah. intercept theorem, and that is because FD is parallel to AB. Good matrix, nice. Okay, so we've identified the triangles. We're getting better at that. The second thing that we want to write, let's do this one in blue. Is the blue easy enough to read? Can you see that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so working in the other triangle, ED over DB is going to be equal to, what should I write here, matrix? Mm. What do you think? EG over GC. EG over GC. Okay, well done. You guys are on fire. EG over GC. All right, we've been given the parallel lines. So again, we're going to write proportionality, intercept theorem. And in this case, it's because DG is parallel to BC. Okay, nice. Well done, everybody. Okay, so we've got that one. Let's just see what that was out of. How many marks? It was out of four marks. All right, so if that was out of four marks, they must be doing this. Statement, reason, statement, reason. Okay, do not forget to name the parallel lines. I know I keep saying that, um, but it's just because so many matrix forget to do that. And then can you see, you would have gone from four out of four to two out of four. All right, lovely, good job, guys. Very, very nice. We're smashing it. Now we need to prove that A1 equals F2. Right, so anything that we've already concluded can potentially help us. So where is angle A1? Okay, so angle A1 is up at the top here, isn't it? There's A1 over there, right? Where is F2 located? Okay, F2 is located over here. Okay. <clears throat> What do we think they want? Oh, hang on, let's just have a look at how many marks this is worth. Oh, five marks. Okay, so this is, we know that there's going to be quite a lot of work involved here. Where do we think our starting point is? How are we going to prove these angles are equal to one another? Corresponding angles? might do. I mean, look, we have got parallel lines, right? So we must be thinking corresponding angles or alternate angles, because both of those would be equal to one another. But in order for um, corresponding angles or alternate angles to exist, certain lines have to be parallel to one another. Okay, so is there a connection between these two? Is there something that both of them are equal to what is a1 what is a1 equal we've got this we've got this diagonal over here so fc uh, is fc parallel to ac iomeda says is fc parallel to Sorry, I'm, I'm lost for a second. I mean, just hang on a second. If C is this line over here and AC is that line over there. So no, those two lines can't be parallel to one another. But AB is parallel to CD. So if AB is parallel to CD, who can see the alternate angles here? All right, remember alternate angles make a Z shape. So in other words, this angle over here and that angle over there would be equal to one another because AB is parallel to CD. 
Is everybody happy with that? Right, so we could certainly start this question A1 equals C2. Indeed, Rechum Aditzwe. So let's just get that down. A1 equals C2. Okay, they make a Z shape. So those are alternate angles. And that's because AB is parallel to CD because they told us in the beginning ABCD is a parallelogram. Now, if we could show that C2 was equal to F2, well, we would prove this, wouldn't we? Because that would be the connecting thing. Now, is there a way for us to show that FG is parallel to AC? What do you think they're trying to get us to use here, Matrix? It's what we've been speaking about this evening. Parallelogram. No, not a not a parallelogram. They want us. Our, our next step in this in this process is to show that C two equals F two. All right, because if C two equals F two and uh, A one equals C two, then they're equal to one another, aren't they? Because they're both equal yeah. to the same thing. Okay, right. So what we want to do is this, not angles in the same segment, Benedict. It goes back to, unfortunately, good suggestion. But we were talking about converse, converse proportionality intercept theory. Converse. Exactly, converse theory. exactly. So if we can prove that these angles over here are equal to one another, We've proved what we want, but in order to do that, we need to show that AC is parallel to FG. All right, and can you see we've actually already got that from 2.2. Look at 2.2, guys. Can you see that ED over DB is equal to EF over FA? And it's also equal to EG over GC. So, based on what I've already discovered, I'm now going to say, well, EF over FA is equal to EG over GC. Okay, look at this. EF, it works perfectly. EF over FA is equal to GC over, sorry, EG, EG over GC. All right. So if I've shown that the sides are in proportion, it means that the lines must be parallel. So therefore, AC parallel to FG reason, converse proportionality intercept theorem. How does that feel, everybody? Have I lost you? Where are you at right now? Is it making sense? You sure, Matrix? 100% makes more sense. Okay, if you want me to explain it again, I'm happy to do so. All right, so we've used converse proportionality intercept theorem to prove FG parallel to AC. Now that we have got this, we can conclude that uh, FG is parallel to, let me just make sure I wrote that right, AC So therefore, C2 equals F2 because alternate, alternate angles are equal. So FG parallel to AC, and there we go. All right, so look at this matrix. We've done it now. We just need to make one final statement. Look here, we've said that A2 equals C2. And we've said that F2 is also equal to C2. So because these two parts are equal, we can now conclude that A1 equals F2. All right, so that's all we need to do. 
And then we have answered the question. Okay, so therefore, therefore, A1 equals F2. Okay, so you can see now how we've used something that we have already established together with converse proportionality intercept theorem, together with alternate angles, something from grade eight, in order to be able to answer this question. I think in this situation here, our marks would be awarded as follows. All right, so there would have to be a mark for that probably statement reason. Then here, uh, one, there was out of five, one, two, that we have to prove those lines are parallel, three, four, five. Okay, like so. Yay, all right, we're getting there, Matrix. Really good, really, really, really good. Okay, I'm very proud of all the work that we've done this evening. We've got another 20 minutes. How's everybody feeling? Are you exhausted? Are you still okay? Are you still able to concentrate? Are you feeling a bit tired now? Are we all good? Because okay, our exams are three hours long, so we've got to be able to concentrate for three hours at a time. Exhausted, but still willing to work. That's very admirable, Chad. I'm sure you are tired after a long day. Okay. All right. Let's let's wrap this up. Okay. Get it done. Okay. <clears throat> Last question. If it is further given that ABCD is a rhombus, prove that ACGF is a cyclic quad. Okay. So now there is the grade 11 work coming through. All right, proving that something is a cyclic quad. How do we prove that a quad is cyclic, Matrix? There are only three ways to do it. What three ways are there to prove a quad is cyclic? Opposite sides are supplementary. Okay, you've left out an important word, CP. What important word do I want to hear you say? Converse, okay, so converse, opposite angles of cyclic quad are supplementary, good, all right, uh, so Hamid said the same thing, all right, the next one, all three of them are converses because we're proving that the quad is cyclic, so the next one is converse, Angles in the same segment. All right. And the last one, Matrix, converse exterior, exterior angle of cyclic quad. Gosh, you guys have to know so much theory, hey? There is so much theory that needs to be learned. All right, so let me just put a little heading here. Why are they all converse? Good question, Chad. Let's talk about that. All right, I'm just going to put here what this was, just so that if you are making notes, how to prove. then at least you can write that down. Okay, very good question, Chad. Why are they all converse, right? So in geometry again, Chad, we have this idea of opposites, okay? So if we go back to the discussion that we've had tonight, if we have a line parallel to the third side of a triangle, then the two remaining sides are in proportion. That's proportionality intercept theorem. The converse says, if we have uh, the proportion on one side 
equal to the proportion on the other side, then the line, the third line, must be, well, the line of the triangle must be parallel to the line that's been drawn inside, okay? We've proved that the lines are parallel. Converse proportionality intercept theorem. So they're opposites, okay? The one comes with parallel lines and proves the sides are in proportion. The other one comes with the sides in proportion and proves that the lines are parallel. They're opposites. It's the same thing with cyclic quads. If a quad is cyclic, then the opposite angles will be supplementary. If a quad is cyclic, then the exterior angle will be equal to the opposite interior angle. If a quad is cyclic, all right, we will be able to use angles in the same segment. Okay, so that's why proving that the quad is cyclic has to be done by using a converse. Does that make sense? All right, so we are working backwards. Okay, all right. I, I know it's a lot, Chad. It's, it's, it's a lot to understand. And you know what? Like two years, grade 11 and grade 12, is not really enough time for us to actually fully be able to understand everything that's going on here, especially because CAPS is so loaded. Um, so, yes, I can appreciate that this is, is, is difficult to understand. These are hard concepts. I mean, what we are doing today is, is, is very difficult. And, I mean, you're expected in, in two years to get on top of that, plus you've got six other subjects to worry about. So th there is a lot of pressure. There is a, a lot of pressure on you um, as matrix. So we, we don't lose sight of that. Okay. All right. So now proving ACGF is a cyclic quad. Okay. So now let's just go over here and go and highlight the quad they want us to uh, prove as cyclic. Now I have drawn all over this thing and it looks <laughs> dreadful now to say the least. Let's just get rid of this. Um, but what I think we should leave on here what I think we should leave on here is some of the things that we've already proved are true. All right. So we know that A1 and C2 and F2 are equal. Okay. We also know that that side and that side are parallel. We know that this side and this side are parallel. We've proved that this line over here is parallel to this one over there. Uh, I think that's about everything, isn't it? Okay. So now let's highlight... A, C, G, F, okay, A, C, G, F. There's A, where's C down, down there? A, C, I'm not drawing this very nicely, am I? A, C, G, F, oh, there we go. See why highlighting is so nice? It just makes things pop out to us. All right. So somebody said it the other night, um, Cindy, I don't know if it was you, but you, you called it the angel wings. I call it a bow tie, but I think angel wings are so much nicer. I don't know if it was you that said that the other night. Right. So in other words, what I'm, what I'm, yeah, um, what I'm, butterfly. Did you Carabo? Yeah, I said butterfly. You said butterfly. Um, oh, okay, I, I like that butterfly. That's really that's so much better than than bow tie. Butterfly is my is much nicer. Okay, so we can see that there is a butterfly inside A C G F. Right. So it seems likely that we could use converse angles in the same segment. Right. If we could show that. Um, a2 was equal to F2, or if we could show that uh, G2 was equal to C2, then we would, we would be able to prove this, right? So let's, they've told us, the other thing we mustn't forget is that ABCD is a rhombus, right? So if ABCD is a rhombus, what do we know about the diagonals of rhombuses? See, again, theory. 
that they're asking us. So A, B, C, D is a rhombus, guys. That means that the line C, A, what does line C, A do to angle B, A, G? Does anybody know? Yeah, it bisects it, quite right, quite right, Chad. So the diagonals of a, bi of a rhombus bisect the corner angles. So what that means for us guys is this, it means that angle A2 is equal to angle A1, all right? So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna say angle A2 is equal to angle A1. Uh, corner angles, diagonals, uh, diagonals, uh, diagonals of rhombus. There isn't an abbreviation for this, unfortunately. Bisect corner angles. Okay, so A1 equals A2. We know that A1 equals C2, but we also know that A1 equals F2. That's what's important for us here. Can you see if we can show, which we can do, that angle A2 equals angle F2? We have proved that they are angles in the same segment. Hence, ABGF will be a cyclic quadrilateral because of converse angles in the same segment. All right, so now A2 equals F2. All right, the reason we've already proven that, so we can say proven in 2.3 or proven above, or we could say um, both equal C2, or if you want to, you can say proven above, because we did do that in 2.3. Right. So therefore, we're nearly at the end now. Last statement. Therefore, AC, GF, is cyclic, converse, angles, in same segment. Okay. How are you feeling? What does R mean, Hamid? <laughs> Hopefully R relaxed, reassured, uh, reinvigorated. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Chad says a bit complex, but it comes better. Yes, it is complex. You're quite right. Thanks, Selena. Thanks, Chad. Oh, that was a mistake. No, that's, <laughs> that's fine. That's not a problem. Cool, recommended swear. Cool, Benedict. Thank you. Thanks for your responses. Is there anything that anybody would like me to go over? Um, I mean, this is a complex question. And... Um, it certainly has taken quite a bit for us to be able to get through it. Is there anything that you would like um, me to ask? Yes, Carabo. Uh, can you please go over the last question again, please? No problem. So now, Carabo, I want you to, 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 to tell me specifically what is it that you didn't understand? Do you understand that we've got to use converse 
um, exterior angle of cyclic quad or converse opposite angles of cyclic quad are supplementary or converse angles in the same segment to prove a quad is cyclic. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. That's okay. All right. So is it just making the connections in this particular diagram that were difficult for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. All right. All right. No problem. Let's do that again. I'm sure if you were struggling to understand it, then there would be other people that were struggling to understand it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'll just quickly, I'll rub this out. Don't worry, guys. I will write it again. If you are writing it down, I will write it again. Okay. So Caraba, what you want to do is read the information that you've been given, right? Because they're, they're dropping hints, right? If they're telling us that ABCD is a rhombus, they're telling you that for a specific reason. So again, they're giving you information and they want you to make a deduction or a conclusion based on that, right? So now what you would do is you'd say to yourself, okay, they say that ABCD is a rhombus. They want me to prove that ACGF is cyclic. I know that I can do that in one of three ways. I've established that since there is a butterfly inside this would-be cyclic quad, that it's probably going to be converse um, angles in the same segment, right? So now you're going to look for the angles that you could prove. So in this case, right, we didn't know that that was equal, we'll get rid of that. What we can do now, we're looking for the angles inside the butterfly. So we've got this angle over here. If we could prove that it equaled that angle over there, we've proved that the quad is cyclic. But do we know anything about angle G2? Nothing. We haven't worked with it at all. We don't know anything about it. So that seems unlikely, all right? Plus, it has absolutely nothing to do with A, B, C, D. So if we go and have a look at A, B, C, D, we say to ourselves, okay, well, we know that this one over here equals that one over there equals this one over here. But if I could prove that this angle equaled this one, then I've proved that it's a cyclic quad. Ah, that's why they told me it was a rhombus. They told me it was a rhombus because the diagonal bisects the corner angle. So if A1 equals A2 and A1 is already equal to F2, then A2 and F2 are equal to one another and ACGF is cyclic. Does that make sense, Karabo? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you sure? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Okay, I'm just gonna write it down for you again, all right? So you would say A2 equals A1, okay? Uh, diagonals of a rhombus bisect corner angles. Bisect corner angles, all right? But you've already proved that A1 was equal to F2, all right? We did that here, didn't we? We proved that in 2.3. So we can even write that. Proved in 2.3. That means that A2 equals F2. A2 equals F2. So now finish this off. Let me just move that out the way. Okay. So now, therefore, A C, G, F is cyclic, converse, angles in same segment. Okay, Carabo. Yes, ma'am, thank you. 
It's a pleasure. It's an absolute, absolute pleasure. Matrix, you have done so well. Thank you for persevering and for all your hard work and your interaction this evening. Um, I so look forward to these lessons and being able to work with you and help you. So yeah, thank you for, for giving me an opportunity to be part of this as well. It's really been amazing. I hope that you're feeling more confident um, and that you know when to use proportionality intercept theorem compared to when to use the converse, um, and then you've seen how these have all come into play into, into doing other things that we need to be able to do as well. Okay, you are amazing. Big round of applause to you all. Um, I will see you again next week on Tuesday, where we will carry on. We'll start talking about similarity. Um, but yeah, have a wonderful weekend. And I'm going to hand you back to uh, Coco. Yes. Hi. And again, it's Monday, not Tuesday. <laughs> oh, what did I say? You said Tuesday. Yes, of course, it's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, my pride. <laughs> okay, I'm getting so many thank you, ma'ams, in the chat. That's awesome. Well done, guys. Um, amazing stuff. Thank you so much, Lee, for all this sorry, content. Pleasure. Oh, hi. We've got a question. Hi, Velo. How are you, ma'am? We're good. Thank you. How are you? Uh, I wanted to ask if do we have classes tomorrow? No, we don't have classes tomorrow. We have classes on a Monday, Wednesday, and then three hours on a Saturday. Okay, I just wanted to be sure because I came late. Oh, no, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to let you in on, on everything that we're going to do now in just a bit. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen quickly. And of course, if anybody's yeah, missed anything, then they can watch it in YouTube, can't they? Yes. Okay, so, yeah. Mvelo, if you've missed anything, our YouTube channel has all the lessons that we've had so far. So you can go ahead and watch all of those and catch up with us. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Sure. What's the yeah. YouTube channel name? It's Watobi. Same as what um, we've got going here now. Okay, so it's spelled W-A-T-O-B-E. Okay, miss. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to okay. jump straight into it because I think we're like three minutes over or so. Okay. But Sorry. Uh, thanks again. So no problem. Thanks again so much for joining us, guys. We love having you guys here with us. Um, you guys have amazing voices. I'm glad to hear so many of them. Um, mm. Remember, again, if you want to chat to us for a little bit, you can come in like three, two minutes early and we can do a little catch up before we start class. We want to hear how you guys are doing um, so you guys can join us for that. Okay, so these are the three, oh no, four lessons that we're having on um, exam prep workshop, but specifically for geometry. Now, this coming Saturday, we'll be having a workshop on trigonometry, general trigonometry, and Maralise will be doing that course for us. So I will also be in that class. Oh no, I, I believe uh, Tula will be doing that class for you guys. So he'll be there to um, help you guys with that. But we've been through these two lessons so far. So next week, Monday, we'll be continuing with geometry with Lee um, on the 25th. Um, and we'll be looking at similar triangles with her. All right, so the homework that we're looking at, I'm hoping I got it right today. We're going to go onto the Watobi app, go to geometry, and then with this time, we're actually going to be looking at the converse of the proportionality theorem. I got it Indeed. right today. You I got did. it wrong on Monday. Today I've got <laughs> you it. You did get it right. Okay. <laughs> well awesome. done. Okay. Now, this is the whole schedule that we've got um, coming up. And as you can see, if you look at week two, the very last lesson that we're looking at on week two is Saturday, October the 23rd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we're going to have the general trigonometry workshop and Maralise will be running that. So I'm hoping to see you guys on Saturday. You're going to use this very link that you've got here with us now for that particular workshop. So don't lose this Zoom link. You're going to use it for that class as well. And last but not least, please invite your friends. If there's anybody at school who you know or a friend who's also in matric who would really benefit from these, please tell them to get to our website and sign up for the matric workshop um, and they can come and join us in this class and get as much out of it as you are. All right. Thank you so, so much, Matrix. That's all that we've got for you guys today. Um, we are so happy to have so many new names and faces with us. And we hope to see 
you guys in every lesson that we're going to be having from now on. All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well done. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, man. Bye. 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 Bye.